Greetings everyone and welcome to the 132nd session of the online optom learning series or OOLS. And for today's session, we have with us uh, Dr. Jamba Paune. He is uh, a bachelor's degree holder and also a master's degree holder in optometry and vision science by the Faculty of Optics and Optometry of Teresa F. OOT, and is also a fellow of the International Academy of Orthokeratology. He is also the chairman of the European IOA Fellowship Program. He also has a PhD in optics and optometry with an emphasis on the topic of myopia control with radial refractive gradient contact lenses. With all that experience, he also holds several awards whereby one of it is the Spinal National Council of Optics and Optometry Award for his work about myopia control with contact lenses. And he also holds an award as a new contact lens overnight orthokeratology design for hyperopia, which he received in the year 2010. He holds a couple of patents onto his name, two ortho-K lens design, for myopia control and also a con contact lens design for keratoconus. Currently, he works as a clinician at the Centro Medico Tecno in Barcelona, Spain, and also he is associate professor for specialty contact lenses at the Faculty of Optics and Optometry at the same university where he graduated from. And today, sir, is going to talk to us uh, about an interesting topic. We all, we all do understand that there is a myopia boom and myopia is increasing. Uh, so how should we go about, uh, you know, controlling myopia specifically with orthokeratology, right? And how should we uh, take into consideration? And sir is going to talk to us about his views and ideas. So welcome, sir, uh, onto our platform. And, uh, you know, let me just leave the screen time to you. Thank you so much. 46% of the attendees who are online on our call today are practicing orthokeratology, whereas the rest 54 are not uh, at this point of time. Yeah. But it's really good. Really good. Okay. Let's go for, for the talk today. So basically, we are... Last times with uh, more emphasis on myopia control. This is not a new topic at all, but today with um, the difference today from 20 years ago is that today we know that we can do something and it's scientifically proven. So this changed uh, the paradigm and the society and that changed um, the industry. And the industry at the moment are pushing more something that is very important, that is myopia control or to slow down myopian children. This is a slide that maybe you have seen sometimes, that is the slide in Taiwanese children, young, young children. So all of them, they are wearing glasses because around 90% of the, that population uses, uh, they have uh, myopia. And um, Brian Holden said some years ago that in 2015, we will reach around the, the half of the population the worldwide half of, of the population will have uh, myopia. This is not, this is a real concern uh, because, uh, of course, the people that need some uh, resources at the level of the economy to get glasses or contacts, but the, the real problem, or real issue is about the risk associated with myopia progression. This is something that we, we know today in myopia is not an issue about uh, some, some glasses or a, a person that is not seeing clear for far away. This is a health problem. This is not immediately health problem, it's a long-term health problem. It's like if you smoke, you have more risk to have cancer, of lung, lungs cancer, not today, maybe in 20, maybe in 30, maybe in 40 years. This is similar. We are treating children in order to avoid trouble in the future. 
every diopter counts, every diopter we increase the quantity of myopia is increasing the risk uh, of, the, of uh, macular, uh, maculopathy, uh, myopic macular degeneration about four, four, four times higher. And the bottom line of that graph, we can see that more than six diopter is uh, associated with more risk on glaucoma, retinal detachment, macular degeneration for, and, and there are more, more issues there, but the risk increases dramatically. That means that um, one, the first goal will be to keep as much quantity of children as possible below minus six. And if we can do better in the future is to have the less level of myopia that we can obtain. The problem is around 10% of the myos will be higher myos. And that 10% of myos will have a risk of one every two will have a macular, macular maculopathy. So one every two will have a disease that will get uh, blind. The beautiful thing, because we worked in uh, the, the, the ortho case started in the 60s in la last past century, but it was not until 2005 that Pauline show uh, state the first trial that show clinically and uh, scientifically proven that ortho K has a secondary effect that is a slow down myopia. Ortho K was create to correct vision during the day, wearing lenses overnight, to uh, correct vision in myopes and astigmatism. But the thing we, we discover is was the, my, and we know in somewhat seeing our patients that is myopia can be uh, controlled or, or slow down. The progression could be slowed down using orthokeratology. And that was in 2005 by Pauline Shaw. After that, we have a plenty plenty of uh, papers that show it. This is in 2005. It appears three uh, meta-analyses that show clearly that the, the ortho K has a beneficial effect in uh, axial length elongation and refractive error grow. This today is no, nobody could, could state that ortho K is not working. So we know that is working. And we know that is the reason for that is the optics. We know that we are uh, doing that using the optics we create on the cornea. Now let's do a small piece of the talk about how ortho K is creating that shape. We know that ortho K is um, using a lens that is a GP lens with a, the central area as a flattened zone that is intended to correct the, the myopia in that case, flattening the central area of the cornea. And there is a reverse curve that is uh, the, the key of uh, all the fitting because it uh, helps the lens to land there again in the cornea. And then we have a Lyman curve. The, the point here is that we be the, the, the initial conception of ortho K, but for today we understand that that change of the shape here, that change of the shape is the responsible of the change in optics in the eye and is the responsible for myopic control. So we know today that changing the shape of the lens, changing the, the way we modulate the, the um, changes of the epithelium can change, can help to improve our results in myopic control for the future. Here is a, there is a picture in the OCT and how the ortho K works. We can see the, the thickness of the epithelial layer of the cornea here and the mid periphery is a little bit thicker. In the middle we have the stroma. After apply orthokeratology lens here, we can see the change we have in the thickness. In the mid peripheral epithelium we have an increase on thickness, then we have a decrease in the mid periphery far away and a decrease on the thickness in the central zone. These changes are a change that we are calling that uh, a refractive technique that is in addition, addition in some in some addition in material here and subtractive in material in the center. So it's a both 
that changes the total thickness we are creating the new shape. It's not only a change in the central epithelium, it's both central and peripheral. That's why the reverse curve that is landing in that area is creating that accumulation of cells there and dramatically changes the shape. And this change of that shape, that is uh, curve, it changes the ray tracing that is going to the cornea and going to the retina. This is a plus power area. This is a curved, uh, curved, a more steepened radius of curvature. And this means this is a high increase in plus power. That's why we, create, we talk about the plus power ring or the changes in peripheral refraction. This is some topics there that are interesting about this, about the efficacy and in ortho K and myopia control. The first topic we, we, we have is we say that the age and the myopia control is related. So initially, we look at the age and uh, initial refraction, but at the same time, the baseline ametropia. So at the moment, we have higher myopia, we have less axial length elongation after one year. This is the four glasses and the, 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 this line. And you see that this line, the strip line, we will see is more or less the same. Everywhere is more or less the same, it's flat. That means that you, you could you will have more or less the same axial elongation in in, in, a, in a child independently of the quantity of baseline my, at myopia you have. But in the case of ortho K, if you have a higher myopia, you have less axial elongation. So something happens there about higher myops in this in in ortho K for better control. And, and looking the age, we, can, we know that the myopia slow downs by age. So young children will increase myopia quicker and older children, older young, younger will uh, increase myopia slower than the, than the lower ages. So a child from eight years old will have more increase than a child from 12 years old, okay? 12 years old here. So the younger you have your child going to your office, the worse if, uh, control you will have. You will have more increase in, you will expect have an increase in axial length on that child because it's simply because he's younger. And if it, that child has a high myopia, maybe it will work better for control that lower myopia. So this is a idea that is mixed age with quantity of uh, uh, baseline refractive error about the, the effectiveness of the ortho K. Uh, lately, we have a, a study from Queiroz from Portugal that they worked that in Singapore. And this is really, really very interesting because this is the change you have uh, in, a, in a child that are wearing ortho -K lenses to have an increase of 0 0.10 millimeters per year of axial length. 0 0.10 millimeters per year is more or less the same quantity of an, a child, a metropic child will increase in axial length after one year around 12 to 13 years old. So it means that if you increase 0 0.10 millimeters per year, more or less you will have virtually, you will have no increase in refraction. Here you could see very, very simply, in a child that you have minus one, they will get a chance to have an increase of 0 0.10 or more for uh, along the years, and you will not have the 50% eff uh, efficacy um, point until 15 years old. So that means that if you are treating a child of minus one with ortho K, you will not get uh, less than 50% of chances to increase more than 0 0.10 millimeters a year uh, until 15 years old. But in the opposite situation, a child with a minus eight, you will get that at six years old. It means that the age is important, but the quantity of myopia is more important too. 
and this is related to the shape we are creating on cornea. The second point we need to look at is about the, the size of the pupil. The size of the pupil increases. It, it implies the entry of the light through the pupil and it changes the peripheral refraction too. So uh, Peter Chen present a long time ago uh, a beautiful paper showing us that in the case of orthokeratology, the children with larger diameter of the pupil, they have better chances to control myopia. But in children with um, glasses, it's the opposite. And this is, uh, we believe that is uh, relate that you, when you are creating your changes on the cornea, you will generate that plus power ring, you will change that changes on the mid periphery and if these changes of the plus power ring or changes on mid periphery on cornea it will be higher for higher myopia and lower for lower myopia like I, we, as we said in some minutes ago but at the same time with uh, high myops you will create a smaller optical zone and this will 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 land inside the pupil size with the lower high my, lower myopia you will have a larger treatment zone and the plus power ring will fall out of the pupil size so in children with larger pupil size it will get that ring inside and you will get better result this is the idea behind here or the supposition uh, now today we are moving, we, are, we, we have the, the peripheral refraction theory. Peripheral refraction theory is very beautiful, but there is some weak points. The idea is very simple in order to understand what we are doing. We, are, uh, we have a retina and that retina needs to have the image placed in front of it, especially in the peripheral region peripheral areas. If you have your uh, focus on peripheral retina behind that retina, that will generate a, a stimulus from the eye to increase the axial length row. That's the idea, but this is not so simple. This is not so simple because, because in optics, uh, real optics, the shape, the, the image you receive in the whole retina is not only one point, only one focus. So today we are moving that, that theory to the high order aberrations. High order aberrations are easily measured by the plenty of device today. And this is related to the change you are creating on your cornea. At the moment you flatten the center of the cornea to correct vision for far, and you increase, you change the shape of the mid periphery, you are creating, of course, the plus power, but you are increasing dramatically the spherical aberration and coma aberration. And today we know that is related. So more high order aberrations you induce to your system through optics, your optical system of the eye, more uh, controlling myopia, less axial length grow. And this is related again to do ortho K in high myopes because you are inducing much higher order aberrations because they are high myopes and you make more changes, you have higher. So the point is that uh, impose the focus that it means that the change of the the image you are creating on retina is a dose dependence response. Today, many of you are aware about um, OIA lens, the Mayo, Mayo Smart lens, and that lens has a small lens set everywhere that changes that the, that the impose the focus. It's a small area of impose the focus. What we know today is in order to control myopia, we need as, as much area as we have with uh, image that it will be in front of the retina. So what is what we, we call impose the focus. And uh, here is a beautiful work in marmo sets made by the, the did by Benavente Perez. And she show us that at the moment she placed uh, lenses, contact lenses on the eye of that monkeys, uh, more plus power you, she induced better control in the axial length evolution. So in, in red is, um, is negative power, in 
in, in blue is positive power. So you can see here how uh, we have less, um, less axial length grow. Then we arrive to the plus power ring we, we, we discussed all the time, right? The plus power ring is the, is the change around the, the, the central area here is almost not seen, is more or less here. And here is the study, they, they, they cut the, the, the corner topography in, three, uh, in 360, in 36 sections. They join every section and they analyze the change from the central corner to the peak of the plus power ring, like here. And what they found here, is that uh, to have a chance to obtain almost 80% of control of myopia, less than 0.10 millimeters per year, you need to increase the plus power ring for a threshold of almost five diopters. There is a recent, very, very recent uh, article um, that they, they, they did in, in Shanghai, I know in Wenzhou, that the, that the, the, the fast, the, the quick uh, change in that slope, better to control, better to control myopia. So we need to look at how to manage the shape we create the eye. Now we ha you have uh, plenty of ideas uh, and we will mix all together in some slides. Here at the end, we can see this, this uh, red ring uh, plus power. It's uh, here, seen here and here. This is the original map in the middle, final map. And this is a difference map. The difference map is very important in orthokeratology because you are aware, you know exactly what you change and where are you changing this. Here you can see this map. You can see here that, that ring and here the same. And in the lower is uh, the treatment area that is this area in green and, and yellow in the center is larger than in the top image. This is a difference. This is minus six, this is minus two diopters in, in the correction. So we, we will, when we correct higher myopia, we will get a smaller red ring, sorry, a smaller treatment zone treatment and a powerful red ring. That's the difference with lower myopia. This is that we talk at the beginning. We will have higher order variations. We will have uh, the red ring inside the pupil size. So we are taking the the pupil size, we are taking the high order operation, we are taking uh, the quantity of the plus power we are generating on that ring, and how is the shape of changes from the center to the periphery. So we are taking a, a account of plenty of information about how we want to modify our shape in the eye in order to get much better or control. We know ortho K is controlling myopia. We know, of, of course, doing any kind of ortho K today, you are slowing down myopia, but we want to do better. We want to do better, better than today. So here is the, 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 the joining all the ideas. Here we can see uh, the, what we call the diameter of the red plus the plus power ring. In, inside we have the treatment zone. So the treatment zone is the area to see clear. And here we have the pupil size. And in that case, we are seeing that the, the plus power ring or the mid peripheral uh, ring created by ortho K is inside the pupil size. This will be, in theory, the best, best attempt to control myopia. But this will create more halos and distortion on the light. So we need to balance everything. This belongs to an article I presented some, some months ago about this, the plus power ring diameter and the effect on control myopia. The first slide, you, you can see that we, 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 sh we, we, we show clearly that when you change the back optical zone diameter of the orthokeratology lens, you are reducing, you are changing your size of the plus power ring or the treatment zone on cornea. 
This what this this article was made with a special lens that is DRL. Other articles that uh, appeared some days ago made by another lens in Hong Kong show the more or less the same results that we have. And uh, this is uh, the core of the study. So we had uh, is that it was a retrospective study. The, we support in two groups. One group, it was in, in uh, five millimeters the diameter for the lens, higher, larger than five millimeters diameter. And we have another, another group with a smaller back optical zone diameter of the lens. And we know that the smaller optical zone diameter of the lens will create a smaller treatment zone and a smaller plus power ring diameter. So you can see here the group with a smaller back optical zone diameter, they have a 0 0.08 millimeter per year of actual length and 0 0.16 for the more than five millimeters. So this is around the 50%, the half, the, the same. You have a 50% more effective, uh, the myopia control, if you are using more uh, smaller treatment zones. Then what we did is to to place in two different groups. Uh, the first group we did, it was when the, um, the pupil size is smaller than the plus power ring, and we get a 0 0.17 millimeters per year, actual length row. When we have the diameter of the plus power ring similar than the pupil size, we get a 0 0.10 millimeters per year, and when we have our group with a smaller treatment zone or a um, plus power ring than the pupil size, we get only 0 0.04 millimeters. And this, it was, uh, is just to take carefully, it was a retrospective study, but I, as I said, there is a study that is coming very soon, and there is another study that was published uh, several weeks ago that showed us that, that that results are exactly the same. So we are sure about this at the moment, or almost sure. And as we say, we they say that it was a dose de res dependent response. That why why we are talking about dose dependent response. So that is the same. That slide is more area of flash power inside the pupil or close to the center. Better control. This is exactly here. Okay, so. This is full effect. It means we have all the ring inside and here no effect, you have all the ring outside. So we see clear the axial length row along the year, it was totally different and we have better control with smaller one. This not doesn't mean that we need to do smaller one for everyone. We need to do that when we have children with a too small, pupil size or a children that is a fast progressor or a children that has low myopia. Because one thing we will do is we'll increase the spherical aberration, comb aberrations, and we'll worsen the vision for the child. So it's, we need to balance the quality of life and vision for the, for the myopia control in the future. So what happens with ortho -K today? What happens for ortho -K today is that you are not able to see the difference between different lenses on the market. Ortho-K appeared uh, 20 something years ago, but they are still looking the same. And the ortho -K was created to correct myopia for far, to correct myopia, and it's not changed for now. But today we want to control myopia, not correct myopia is not a refractive system it is but we want to make a um, health system there is different the objective so how we can obtain that the smaller treatments on diameter when you want so of course we can change the shape of the lens we will look about this in some minutes or you can use any device in ortho -Okay you have in your office and just to increase the th tier, tier layer thickness on the center. At the mo you know that every GP lens that you put on eye, you have a, a very thin tier layer 
between the lens and the cornea. And here is the same. So at the moment you want to get a smaller optical zone, treatment zone, you only need to increase the, the, thick, the thickness of tear layers. So that means a steepening the lens. At the moment you have a, two, a very flat lens, you have a large area. But if you steepen your, your feet, you will get a smaller area there. And this is so simple. That is the much easier way to do it. Then you could use different designs. For example, here is the, is the comparison from CRT and Dreamlight. That is a, a paper published for Marcot Collar from Canada. Or you can customize lens. So here the change, you, you could to use a six millimeter optical zone diameter or five millimeter optical zone diameter. Today, I guess there is uh, many labs that allow that and you will get every, tomorrow, almost everyone will provide this because today is a race on that direction. Here is the change of the shape of the lens. And what happens here, you have of course, a, sm a smaller optical zone. So you have that you will generate your plus power ring closer to the apex, but you have less tear layer there and that will create a less powerful plus power ring in that area. Here is the, st the results of the study from um, uh, in, in, in US that it was um, I, the, the inventor of the ortho tools. And he, sh he used uh, lenses from six millimeters or five millimeters. And they compare with a study on uh, uh, the idea of that. It was to increase and get the same tier layer of the, t of the, at the end of the optical zone. And he compare here in green. It was five, five years follow up of children from low myopia to high myopia, low myopia to high myopia with the regular six millimeter uh, OK lenses. At the moment, Eddie Show you use uh, this lens, a spherical optical zone with five millimeters optical zone diameter. He get the red results that they are almost similar results from everyone. So what is this? We, we, we say at the beginning, we get better result with higher myops. And, and worse result with lower myops. This is the green results, the green color, okay? This is normal, okay, lens. But at the moment we change the shape and we reduce the treatment optical zone and we increase the plus power ring, then we have the same result for high and low myops. This is the beauty of this. Here is the design of DRL lenses. This is my own design for six millimeters. Again, five millimeters. This is better for quiet control. And again, I call prevention design that you could see here the difference of the tier layer. As we said about, this is much green, less green color. And we say it about the Eddie Chow designs. This is on the market, of course. And here you could see the dramatic difference uh, with the lens. It is the same, it's in cornea, just correcting one diopter of myopia. But when you use a, a, a regular ortho K, you have almost no plus power ring. When you use the prevention design, you have a higher plus power ring as you have higher myopia. So better control. So we arrive to the point that is to monitorize how to follow up your myops, how to follow up your ortho -K cases there or myopia control cases using whatever, uh, glasses, ophthalmic lenses or uh, soft contact lenses, okay? Uh, before to start at that point, just to ask um, uh, if there is some questions, Fagrudin, or we move on. Uh, I think so. We'll take questions at the end. At this point of time. Okay, we'll... and we not we have some poll to launch, right? Yes. Maybe it's a moment now. No. Okay, so let me just put up the poll. Yeah. On, on, do you think any diopter counts in myopia? So just want to see what people think. Mm -hmm. That a diopter counts in myopia. Do you think that is important? Okay. Or... They... 
they was <laughs> listening. <laughs> they was listening everything. And someone right late and don't listen about. But okay. <laughs> yeah. Any diopters counts. Any diopters counts because any diopter you increase uh, the, the in myopia on, in a child, that means a 40% increase in myopic uh, maculopathy in the future. This is just talking about risk. It seems that change from one to two diopters is not very important and changing from six to seven is more important. Of course, a child with minus two is a, has a, a lower impairment compared to a child with minus seven. But of course, uh, it's still myopia and it's still a change in the shape of the eye and it's still an increase in risk. So yes, any diopter comes today, okay? Perfect. So how to monitor the size? Here is the results we have on study we did in Spain with the myopia master device. And you can see here, oh, the, the axial length is changing along the years for the child. So one thing that some people believe or believe it in the past, it was that the, the axial length doesn't change after six years old. That is not the truth. Axial length is changes. It changes along the life and stops around 17 years old to grow in a normal eye. In my opinion, it can continue to grow after that, that time. This is here, you have different, different studies published already to, to understand what happens here. So um, you could see here that in the change, for example, in myops, this is the, okay, the, um, the line in the middle is just a metropic children. Uh, here, that line, this line is the eye grow along the years for anemotropic children or normal one. But what happens with the myops is the axial length is growing in a different, different way that it will grow in a child with um, emetropia, like this. So what we need to do is to, in, in the moment that the child arrive to, arrive to our office, is to change that trend and move in the same trend you have for anemotropic children. That's the idea we are looking at, okay? And not, not only axial length is important, one way to, to, to follow this is using the axial length corneal refraction ratio. There is several studies that show the correlation in, in, between two another, but I want you to look here one thing, because one thing you have is, if I measure the axial length, I will know the refraction of the children no, the answer is no, you will not know that. The problem with ortho K is you are using an ortho K lens on eye and you are not able to measure the refraction of the child because it's corrected, because the cornea is mold. So the only way to measure that is using axial length, but axial length is correlate more or less to refraction. And here, you could see this, this, these two areas. So we, if we look at the first part, even if you have an axial length changing from 22 to 24, you have the same, you could have the same refractive error. At the moment you are going into myopia, then yes, then you have a good correlation. That means higher the myopia, larger the axial length, but not for the beginning. If you are joining this with the corneal radius, then using that ratio, you have a much better correlation. That is much better. If actual length refractive error is around 70% correlation, maybe 65% correlation, here you have 85, 90% correlation. So it's much better to use to know the real refraction of the child, or at least the increase of the child. 
And finally, you have plenty of charts in internet, but this is the most known that it will tell to you if your child is in re under risk. You measure your axial length, the axial length of the child, and then you say, okay, my child is 23, 23 millimeters, for example, at 10 years old. So it's here. So the change of myopia is around 2% and to get myopia is 16% at the end. But if you have, your child has 25 millimeters axial length at 10 years old, then you could tell to the parents that the change to have myopia is 33 and to have myopia will be 100% sure and to be high myopia is 31%. So depending on the point you have the axial length measurement, you, you will inform your fathers, fathers in the different way. You will tell the, pa the fathers that it's necessary, it's compulsory to do something, or maybe they could wait more, okay? So it's important to use the axial length measurements today. It will be new paradigm. And even more, because at the moment you use a uh, device for axial length measurement that we have today, three or four in the market, then uh, you have a standard uh, around 0 0.05 diopters measurements and you will never get better than 0 0.25 diopters using cycloplasia in auto refractor in children so you have a much 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 accurate measurement a much 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 accurate follow-up of the children i grow so and the, and also you have no cycloplasia necessary is a very accurate and is only um one parameter more using on your on your on your fill Then we have a question that is not for okay, but is uh, overall, that is at one, what, at what age you need to start? We say what, every diopter counts, and what age you, you, you must start? With ortho K, we have some concerns sometimes in young children. So that some colleagues, they will start at, at 12 years old. For me, seven years old is the age at the moment the child is able to manipulate quite easy the lens. So I will start at around seven years old for that. The thing you need to know is what is important, the younger children progress faster. So as soon you start is better. Of course, high myopia will control better, but it's really necessary to wait to have high myopia. And in the diopter counts, we know. So as earlier, as earlier you start, the better. That's my opinion. And when to stop? So do you need to stop? There is a study of Pauline Cho showing about the rebound we have after to the to stop to wear orthocale lenses for six months, and they show that um, this is the control group with glasses. This is the group using all the time orthokeratology. And this is a group using the ortho K, stopping using it. So we have a rebound there and they re resume to the ortho K. So they continue to have a good line there. So one thing we know here is for my point is I will never stop a treatment for myopic control in a child before I'm sure that the, the myopia is really stopped. And this using axial length that will, I will monitorize that child. And if the child wants to stop and move to another system, preferably it will be a system that is a myopia control system. And we need to follow that children every six months to see what is happening there. Of course, many of our uh, patients will, want, they, they will uh, have surgery at age of 25, but we need to be sure that the myopia will be stopped before to uh, take out the system that control myopia. So to stop before 14 years um, is the same. Uh, the rapid progression will occur. We need to not stop the lens so soon. We need to wait. We need to be quite patient. We need quite patient. And we know as well that the myopia is not, um, it's still growing around in some ages. So only 
50% of the child, half of the, of the half of the child will have stable myopia by 15 years old. So we need to wait at least for 21 years old. But we have the, we know that around 10% of the population of myopia population will increase myopia at age of 30 years old. So every, every case should be looked at very carefully in a, in a proper way and isolate way. So it's, it should be something that we custom made. Every person is different and we need to follow every person in, in very careful systems as axial link measurements to decide. So and that's just what I said, the myopia is not stopping. And some, uh, of course, uh, as, as older you are, better results, but this is the progression over five years for um, at least a streak, a one diopter. So at, at the age of 35 years and 40 years old, around 10% of people, of people are still progression for one year every five years. So it's a little bit less than quarter diopter per year. So this is not, say that myopia will be stopped at the age of 21 or 25 or 16. No, it's not an age. It depends on every case that will stop at that point. So arriving here is uh, with the final question. So it's uh, how much longer we need to take our ortho -K. And I say that even if the teenager will be lazy or is uh, quite discomfort on the money, we need to follow the axial length to be sure that myopia is stopped or not. If myopia is not uh, as, as stopped at the moment and the parents of the children want to stop the wear ortho K, we need to move to another system for myopia control. It will be multifocal soft uh, daily wear lenses, or it could be the new lenses for an ophthalmic lenses for that. And of course you could use at the same time, atropine that we, we didn't talk about this in this talk, but it's, we could put atropine on top of everything you are doing. And this will be the best thing you can do for your patients and the best service you could do for the, your society, helping the health for the future. So at this moment, just help us uh, just say uh, thank you for uh, the attention. I'm ready for questions, of course. Maybe I will not have the answer for everyone if it's too difficult for me, but I will do the, my best. Thank you so much for the attention. All right. So thank you so much, uh, sir, for that wonderful, wonderful presentation. I think uh, you did cover a very uh, important topics, you know, starting from uh, pupil size, importance, uh, the age, the amount of myopia, and how should orthokeratology lens be fitted in those. So, thank you so much for doing that for us. And uh, so while we are waiting for some questions, sir, so uh, this is just something related to the uh, the fitting, what you were mentioning just now that, you know, you had these three groups in your recent publication, which you said that uh, the the reverse zone ring or the red ring uh, when it is under the pupil or smaller than the pupil, it gives much better uh, control of myopia, right? Is that uh, right? So, uh, and you did mention that how can we achieve it is either by changing the fit or by changing uh, the design, right? Uh, yep. Any other tips on how can we do that? Because normally in, I'm just talking about the Asian uh, perspective here. Uh, we do not have that much of availability in terms of design choices. So most of the times we are restricted to one or two particular designs which are available in our area or you know in our practice. So do you think anything else apart from that we can do or any suggestions you would give if you are only having that amount of restriction you see we, we are not a, having many designs so we can play around what if we are restricted what should we actually aim for what what should be the best thing which you can do okay um Today, uh, CRT, they have five millimeters optical zone. They is already commercial available. There is one of the, the lenses that is more sell in the world. Uh, you have a DRL, my design in Malaysia. This, uh, you have available that, that lens through Stanish tags in, in Singapore, if you want this. So you can use that. 
Uh, there is other designs, uh, Emerald, and you have other designs that you could change the optical zone of that lens, of course. Then you have uh, two, let's say that if you have only one design and you have not able to modify that design, uh, yeah, I, I, I let you know that the way to do that is making a stiff fit. Just doing a stiff fit by 10 microns a stiff fit, you will get a smaller optical zone. That is for sure. This is, um, this is the easiest uh, way. And then you need to go for the more complex way. That is, you need to design your own lenses. And this is uh, more complex, but there is different um, software available in the world that you could do that. One, design, one is iSpace from Australia. Another is GPE Designer from, Austra from uh, Italy. And another is uh, OrthoTools from Eddie Chow. You could find all that uh, systems to design lenses in, in internet very easy. But of course, at the moment you want to design your own designs, your own lenses, it, it, need, it needs a learning curve. It's not immediate. You need to understand how you want the lens, what you want to do, what to do. So you will lose a little bit time and money in that area. It, of, of course, it's easier to follow something that exists. So I guess you have three, three levels or in steepening the feet or using a design that allows you to, to have already a shape that we want as, as DRL lenses, or you are creating your own design using a software. That, I guess, is the three steps you could follow for that. All right. Yeah. So that, that, that's really helpful because, as I said, sometimes the availability and, you know, that plays a very crucial role. We might, we might not be able to get that. But, yeah, we can take this step-by-step -step approach, as you mentioned. So we can yep. focus on the fitting perspective first. And once we are... Uh, probably well developed or you know once we do a lot of uh, cases then maybe we might have the availability as well and uh, that would help all yeah. right all so right much. we are taking some questions here i'm just gonna put that on three uh is it necessary to reduce the bozd uh, for patients who are going to use overtime ortho k so do you think you will do it for all patients or just for Myopia control, is that? I already said that point. Okay, uh, in my office, I I reduce systematically the, the back optical zone diameter of the lenses for every child that is uh, with myopia in, in progression. I do for any child directly, always, but of course, uh, even we have we, even we have um, two articles at the moment that show that could improve that show that reduce that optical zone diameter could improve myopia control. Or they will be better. Then we need to be quite careful until we have more information at that point. And there is some people that are against that idea because they say that you will worsen the quality of vision of the child. At the moment you are making that optical zone diameter smaller, you will have a more a spherical operation that is something that controls myopia, but this will increase halos and glare and distortion and bad quality of vision. So you could increase the complaints and you could create a not so good happiness on the child. I, I should to tell that the child will adapt to that. They does, don't make complaints for this. But one thing that we will do maybe in next future, it will create the back optical zone diameter relate to the pupil size diameter of the child. And this will maybe be a better idea that make all the people with the same size. All the people with the same size is the same that you are doing with soft lenses with the same radius of curvature, with the same diameter, with the same material, with same everything. But here we are looking the individual. So in the next future, we need to do a more custom designs for each person. That will be the next future, uh, the point we need to do. But at this moment, you know, in a way to do in a system, yes. For my point of view, yeah, I will reduce for every child the back optical zone diameter, for sure. 
Okay, great. And uh, would you would you also inform the parents and you know the patient if uh, about this that you know uh, uh, you are gonna experience the halos and all that? Do you think? No, 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 never, never say that. <laughs> 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 never, 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 never. Okay, this is a a mistake I did in the in in the, my my starts. Uh, I tried to inform the parents uh, that the child could experience some halos or halos or glare or distortion or whatever, um, and and that was uh, in a, in a trend to avoid. Uh, complaints from the parents saying, "Oh, my children is saying, is telling to me that she's seeing colors on or, or halos uh, around uh, fog, fogging around the, the the lights and the things to avoid this." But uh, what I discovered is um, is preferably you say nothing, okay. and at the moment the parent say uh, or the children say uh, I'm not seeing clear or my children is not seeing clear and uh, your answer is yes that's normal this for this is a part of the of the of the system because at the moment I, I it, let's imagine you take a pill that your doctor receives to you an antibiotics and you read everything and your doctor tell to you be aware that probably you will have dizziness uh, headaches, you could have uh, some constipation and many other things, right? So you will take your pill and you will start to feel your brain. I I'm feel uh, dizzy. I feel uh, this. Uh, you look all that symptoms. Uh, you will look all your that symptoms. So it's not good idea to in, to 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 put the, the mind of the patient looking all the symptoms you could have because it's better if they have and don't complain, it's no problem. If they complain, you say, yes, that's normal. Or yes, that's normal. I will try to improve that. I will make a new lens for you with not such is this point or just we need to wait one week more and that will disappear. So this will arrive with your expertise of your confidence in the treatments. After time, you know that is normal, that is happening in not so many patients. So you will not inform that to the patients. Okay. So it's a good, good, good point. Really good point. Yeah. All right. So because, you know, uh, sometimes what happens is we are very cautious. We want to tell the parents and because we are doing all of these uh, for the patient, we tend to overwhelmingly tell, tell them that, you know, this. So this good. is my opinion. This is my opinion. For example, Mayo Smart, the lens from Hoya, they, they have a small Brighton thing that you give to the parents and the parent, the children will write. I see clear or not. I see this. I see I, uh, halos. This is, I don't know. I guess it's a wrong idea, but um, every, every company do whatever they want, right? Because you, f you make the, the, the parents focus it on the quality of vision of the child. And it will be a, a, a mother... Are you seeing the clear? Are you seeing blur? Are you seeing hellos? Are you dizzy? Are how you feel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> some mothers will be all time uh, over the child, you know. So, okay. not important. Not necessary to do okay. that. Not, right. not cre don't create a problem where it's not a problem. That's right. And yeah. <laughs> don't create more problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mend and it is broken. So don't don't mend it. Things which are not broken, don't touch that. And then <laughs> okay. don't, mend, don't yeah. mend things that are not broken. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's look at another question, sir. So any suggestions uh, what you normally practice in patients uh, to improve compliance uh, in the long run of the treatment? Because as we said, that ortho K which probably would not be stopping these patients very soon. It's it's kind of an ongoing process. So anything yeah. which you do to explain to parents or patients to improve their compliance so that they are into the orthokeratology. Mm -hmm. Our ortho -K is, um, is a system that works very well because um, the, the user is seeing clearer during all day long 
without lenses, contacts, glasses on eye, no hassle. So you are seeing as a normal person, you can swim, you can play sports, no dust problem, no problems of dryness of eye. So there's plenty of benefits. That's why uh, ortho -K is one of the treatment systems that is more with more higher level of compliance of the patients. But even that we have around 15 to 20% loss of the patients usually after, the, after one year. In general, it's more related to comfort. So, and this, we need to treat the eye as a, a GP lens. Let's see if, if you have a, uh, um, GN con conjunctivitis on the on the on the on leads, you need to treat this. If you have a dry, dry you need to treat it. If you have a feed that is not co properly correct and the lens is making some hassle, some pain on on the lead and blinking, you need to thicken to modify this to change the diameter, so on. Or others are when you are, we have difficulties to have the lens centered on the middle. And then the, the, if the lens the centers, you have a halos, diplopia, monocular diplopia, not good quality of vision. So these kind of patients that they feel the lens at the moment of wearing that is, uh, or the patients that have a bad quality of vision because the lens the centers are more prone to kit the treatment. This is the points we need to avoid that are mainly are points that is under our control. Just treat the condition of the eye you have, just make a good fitting. Sometimes perfect fitting is not possible, but you need to try to do an approach to this. This is the cases. After this, some child want to keep the treatment and you need to convince him to continue. And one thing I do when the child is around 17 years old, 18 years old for sure, they, they get the driving license. So at, at the moment they get the li driver, driver license, is 18 years old, the myopia is not growing as so fast as before. And I will change the lens to a larger, to a normal treatment zone diameter to they get the best quality of vision. And they will continue to control myopia somehow. So is this the, the strategy I use in, in older, young, youngers? This is in general what we do. So avoid, avoid troubles. Here is to mend pro problems before appear. This is a different, <laughs> different mending. <laughs> because you know, you know that will appear the problem. When you know the, the, it will appear, it will arrive that problem, then you could mend that. For example, you imagine your lens is the center and a child they have eight years old, they will never complain. But this same child at age of 14, they will complain and they will say, no, I will not want to wear this because I see double. So this is the difference. So you, you can mend the problem before uh, it getting worse. All right, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, any thoughts on uh, combination treatment of atropine and ortho K? Would, would that affect your ortho K fitting or how, yeah. how the myopia management? The, the answer is clear. Uh, the top, uh, the top, or, or atropine, topping atropine in top uh, ortho K and multifocal works. Okay. So, this is something that works. When I use that, it's only when I have axial length grow, even using the best ortho -K I could put on the fit on the child. Why? Because I need to control and every diopter counts, but I don't want to have my child with a drop every night for 10 or 15 years. So I try to avoid uh, these uh, drugs that it could have some secondary effects. And is uh, again, another hassle for the child that every night they need to put a drop before go sleep. So if, if I could avoid that, I avoid that. But the moment I follow a child, I see the, the axial length is growing, even using ortho -K, then I use atropine on top. And this, usual, this is the same for multifocals. This is the same idea you could use together. And you could use that together with the Myosmar lens. So it's, it's, it's 
everything could join because atropine is working in a different way. Atropine is, is acting similarly, but using other other direct other 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 openings in the eye, other trends on the eye, other lines on the eye. It's not exactly the same. We are using optical devices that is using an optical signal. There is a chemical signal. They are joined together, working together, and it's shown that it works. We need more information about if it's not working in high myopes, that is something people is saying that. Of course, the dose, uh, the dose of atropine. We have today uh, articles that show us that 0.01% is almost not very effective. So we are moving to 0.02 or maybe 0. 0.05% of atropine. Of course, it's dose dependent, but more atropine, more secondary effects. So again, we need to take care of, of our patients because they come for that. That's my point of view about this question. Great, great, great. Uh, and uh, I think you did cover some part of it in the previous answer where you mentioned that you would probably change the optical zone design. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So when they reach adulthood, you might change them to give them maximum visual uh, benefits. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, due to the current scenario of COVID, uh, do you think that because of the constraints in terms of lack of physical activity and online education, uh, no, have, no, no. have you found any problems in your ortho -care patients, especially with dry eyes? or any sorts of your patients? No, no. The only problem we had is patients, now is finished, but uh, during the COVID period, uh, the problem we had is patients didn't come to the office to, wow. to replace the lenses. Yeah. And uh, some patients uh, give up to, to continue to wear the lenses on overnight because they stay at home. But in general, no, I had no problems for that. Dry eyes in children is quite weird, so not a problem. And also, ortho -K is the system in contact lenses that when you have a dry eye is the, is the, is the indication because you, have, you, you don't need the tears for the lens overnight is no dryness. You have a, the, the eye, the, the eye is closed overnight, so you have no problem with dryness. All right, okay. And uh, one more question related to fitting. So what could be the minimum or the smallest BOZD which can work well? Does it relate to the eye or do you have some numbers in mind that this is how steep or this is how smaller you should go. Don't go smaller than this. Any, any magic number you have? This is a really good question. It's really, really good question. Um, I have no answer. I have no answer for that. But um, I did never try this. Uh, I am um, I have the idea that if you reduce the optical zone too much, you will get uh, a, a central island that is uh, under correction in the center of the cornea. Um, and also there is an intriguing thing that when we change the back optical zone diameter of the lens and we make it smaller and smaller and smaller, of course, the back of the, the treatment zone on the cornea is smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's not following the same ratio. And apparently, you will not obtain, it is a, it's a moment where this will keep the same, not, not smaller, it's, it will not continue to work. But this is some, um, yeah, it's, a, it's just, I, ne I will never try uh, to do a back optical zone of the lens of one millimeter or two millimeters or three millimeters. It's a crazy idea. But um, maybe four millimeters we can try. But I never try four millimeters. And I guess it's really not necessary. Maybe it's important. Maybe it's important. We don't know. We really don't know. That I have no, no magic number, no, no answer for, for that at that point. But 
and we need to explore more that point. I think we need to explore more. That's right. We need to explore that point. Yes. All right. Great. Yes. And a couple of more questions. So this is one of the case scenarios. Somebody has a patient, oh. uh, the nine-year-old patient, uh, and is wearing ortho K for one year. An axial elongation has been about 0 0.40 mm. Uh, yeah. Do you think we should continue, change the design, add atropine, and these are the values, refractive error, a very low myope, 1 to 5, and axial length was increased from 24.35 to 24.75. So that's the key scenario. Any tips on that? Uh, of course, atropine. Mm -hmm. Atropine, of course. That's for sure. Then to modify the lens, yes, it should. We need to look at the fit. We need to look at the map we have. We need to see uh, what is happening here. I'm I'm pretty sure we have not enough a smaller treatment zone there. But even even though mm, it's quite high, actually increased really high. We need to look at the, the graph we, we present before, right? And I will show this um, one second. Uh, this is um, is uh, a moment, yeah. We share this. Yeah. So we are going here. Oops, no. Here. And uh, you say this nine years old, and it changed. Uh, we we see here, right? A change. Let's see that uh, forty. The change from nine to ten is from twenty three four more or less to um. Oh, what, what is this here? Okay, insert. Let's do. Let's do this. Okay, this is nine years old. And this is the myop, and this is the this is the increase is here. Okay, so it's twenty three point four. But if we are going to ten years old, this is uh, twenty three. Uh, let's say seventy. So it's around. Um, Seven to four is zero point thirty. So this child is increasing more than a child that is wearing glasses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the idea. So um. Uh, oops. So um, it's, we are talking about in uh, zero point four millimeters, and a child, a myopic child with this uh, amyotropia, it will increase 0 0.3 per year using glasses. So you have an increase of more than a, than a, that is using that the normal child. They, it means to me, the first thing it means to me is it's a fast progressor. Fast progressors are children that increases very quick and uh, they, in, they they get more myopia very fast, very rapidly. And of course, this fast progressor, they had the mo they they get the higher benefit in ortho K. This is uh, known that you get the the most most uh, highest effectivity. So in theory, but we don't know that this child is not using ortho K. It will get 0 0.8 millimeters, so double. That's the theory, just theory. Nobody knows. We we have. No cue that will have had happening if you are not using that ortho K. But the, the idea is not using ortho K, you will get 0 0.8. So yes, we need to look at the fit. Maybe you need to or increase the thickness in that layer, so steepening the fit to make a smaller optical zone, or you need to uh, look a lens that you could reduce the optical zone there. Look that we have a refractive error of 1.25. So we have a child in the in the in the area that you have more risk because the plus power ring you are creating with ortho K is is not very powerful. So ideally, you need to use a design, your own design, following the steps of uh, Eddie Cho or using a design like DRL prevention, for example. This will be the best. So try to mo change the type of the lens. It will be if it's available because you say sometimes it's not available, but is it available? Yes. 
change the type of lens, put a drop in on top. And after six months of change, at, uh, with this change, you follow it. It, it, let's imagine, for example, you are not changing anything and you just put atropine on top. You need to follow after six months if it's following the same line. If it's following the same increase, you need to increase the dose of the atropine. You start for 0 0.01, then you move 0 0.02, then you move 0 0.05 percent of atropine. This is the, a way you need to follow this. If you want, you follow for three months and you divide this in three. So you need to know if you, the thing you are doing is working. And the best thing to know is, is doing one step by step. So first you add, uh, keep the same lenses and add atropine on top because we will do it for sure. And after three months, you will see if it's working or not. If it's working, yes, we change the type of the lens then. If it's not working, then we need to increase atropine. It's not working, you increase atropine. It's not working, you change the type of the lens and you keep atropine on there. You don't remove atropine even if it's not working because it's doing so something for sure. This is, this is difficult cases. This is a very challenging cases. At this moment, we have nothing else to do. This is the maximum we can do. In the future, we can do more things. Maybe in that case, it's this moment to look at the uh, binocular vision. We need to see if it's, there is some problems in binocular vision to, to need to uh, keep our attention at. We need to do some visual therapy there. Maybe we need to do that. And of course, we need to look, we need to ask the parents, how much time you stay outdoors? Your children must stay outdoors for a minimum of two hours per day and should be outdoors two hours per day in sunlight. This is important. And it's not stay two hours in sunlight using the mobile phone. No, it's, <laughs> it's playing outdoors, okay? This is extremely important. And not to read too close to the things, to use a proper light at home, to uh, get to bed at earlier time, to not receive blue light on the eyes before to go to sleep. So this is for the, for the melatonin. So this is other, uh, many things we need. Uh, this is another topic, but extremely important. We need to look globally, not only one device, right? We need to glo globally what we are doing. That's right. Yeah, it's a multidiscipline. So you have to, you know, not only think about the fitting, but look at the other factors, nutritional, outdoor activities and other things to make sure that Absolutely. you are not causing the myopia to progress. All Absolutely. Right. All right. Okay. One last question again. This okay. Is, okay. Uh, something which is uh, come up again. So uh, ortho -K lenses generally are worn in the night, but do you really advise uh, patients to sometimes wear it in the afternoon for any cases like let's say they have a break in the afternoon where they take a short nap yeah or sleep. do you think that they should be wearing them in the afternoon in any cases okay uh they should the problem is if it's a problem to do that or not this is a hassle to do that or not what especially in higher miles what we know today a, a friend of i juan perez did the study and they measured that if a patient is doing a nap without ortho -K lenses, they erase, they lose effect because they are, they, the, the lead is uh, rubbing the, the eye during the sleep and they is reducing the effect. So especially in high myops, if they do a nap, it's very recommendable to use the lenses on. Of course, in children, it's not really, really, really necessary. But in high myop children, yes, I will recommend that. It's up to the children. But the problem is they will lose effect if they are not sleeping with that lenses on. Yeah, of course. OK, great. So I think with that, uh, we have taken uh, most of the relevant questions. So thank you so much, uh, sir, for you know answering the questions and taking us through the, the whole idea about you know, changing the treatment zone and how it can help uh, for myopia control. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, okay. We do have session planned uh, next weekend. So do join us next week. Until then, take care. Uh, stay safe and see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for everything, Fakhruddin. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.